What, what you've done to the books really marries with how it read in my head. So the emotions, the tone um, at particular pieces and particular chapters and the delays between the words and the delays, uh, especially in the funny parts, like the humorous parts, when actually they're just looking at each other because they're, they're a bit confused and you somehow get that across, whereas another narrator may have just read that and it would have been quite flat. The incident room door slammed closed, leaving behind what felt like a vacuum. Only Jackie Chapman and Michael Priest remained with Ben, while standing called out from the far end of the room. You handled it well, Ben, he said in a rare moment of praise. Aye, keep them on the line, Gillespie added. Don't play your cards too soon. That's what I say. Thanks for your advice, Gillespie. Next time you're being interrogated during a briefing, I'll be sure to remind you. No bother, he replied, clearly not catching Ben's sarcasm. Who was that with him, anyway? I can smell her all the way up here. Standing and the rest of his team were all listening in. They waited for Ben to answer, as if he might know who she was. I have no idea, Jim. Looks like the love child of Princess Di and that actress from the X-Files. Gillian Anderson. Chapman said, her face clearly showing that she didn't agree or approve of him making a comment about Princess Di. Aye, that's the one, he replied. If you have any trouble with that one, and you will, send me in. I'll be more than happy to deal with her. Jack Cartwright, how are you? I'm good, Graham. How are you, sir? Very good. Uh, really enjoyed narrating this audio book. Uh, it's good. something else. So well written. It's a murder mystery, Secrets in Blood. It's a Wild Fens murder mystery. It's book one of a series of books. Thanks for choosing me. And no, it's, no set, it's set in rural Lincolnshire, which is where you are right now. How are things there? It is. It's beautiful. Blue skies. Um, couldn't ask for more. That's, that's about as good as you're going to get in the UK, right? Blue skies. Yeah. A bit warm. Yeah. And I can tell from your non Lincolnshire accent that you're not a local. Nope. I'm originally from East London uh, slash Essex. Um, yep. So I, I I moved abroad. I, I grew up in, yeah, I grew up there. I moved to Dubai, um, spent a decade of my life in Dubai, um, where I, I hopefully lost most of my Essex. Uh, accent I, I wasn't I, it, was, yeah, it wasn't very wasn't very personable um so yeah so now I've, I moved back and we're in Lincolnshire this is um where, where I met my wife in Dubai and we're we're here now it's stunning yeah love right. it right oh is she from Lincolnshire no nope, not at all um her dad moved to Lincolnshire um and I, I came I came to visit so the idea the original idea was I was going to leave Dubai um, and go and live in Montana because I've got family out there. My uncle had a couple of ranches. Um, so I was just going to go there and write. Um, but it was literally, I think, two or three months before I was going to make the move. And then I'm, I met my future wife. Uh, and it kind of put a spanner in the work. So I took her to Montana and she loved it, but it wasn't a kind of place that she would want to live. Um, it was very, it was very rural. I mean, Lincolnshire is rural, but... Montana, I mean, it's, it's rural. Yeah, yeah. Um, so we came to visit her dad once, I think it was a Christmas time, and I fell in love with the place. Um, this is, I mean, this is as close as you're going to get to Montana in the UK. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. Big, big skies, beautiful vistas, um, fairly flat. I mean, we haven't got the, the mountain ranges like, like Mont Montana has, but yeah, big, big open landscapes, lots of farm. We're a pretty slow pace of life. That's, yeah, it suits me. Yeah, well, Lincolnshire becomes almost an extra character in the book. And you've mm -hmm. got a fish-out-of-water character in there as well in Freya. Um, yes. Yeah. How would you describe the book? Because it's about it's basically mm -hmm. about cops serving, uh, trying to solve a murder, isn't it? Yeah, so it's a murder mystery series. Um, <clears throat> but it's as much about, it's probably 40% about the team and their lives as well. So all of the, I mean, I enjoy reading murder mysteries myself. Um, I read Jason Darkleash or J.D. Kirk. I, I, I love those guys. But it's about it's about the team, right? So detectives, when they're when they're working on an investigation, they they don't 
work their entire lives. You know, they go home and they see their wives and, you know, and they have a li- this life outside of work. So it's, it's about that. I mean, obviously, for the purposes of fiction, I mean, a murder investigation can take weeks or months or even years, right? Um, that, that makes a pretty long book. So you, you find that most, most murder mystery writers will condense that to a week or two. Um, yeah. But that's kind of just to make stories work and make them um, swallowable, right? Make them digestible. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, so it's as much about the the lives of them as, as, as it is about the crimes, um, and, and it's lovely because you get you get to know the characters, and it's it's all about the characters, isn't it? And after a while, I mean, I'm writing book eight now, um, and it's the same. I mean, this isn't these aren't the first books I, I've written. These are the first books books I've written under Jack Cartwright, but yeah. I've written under a under a pen name before, um, thirty books, and y- y- characters take on this this pers- personality of their own. So actually you get to a point in the book and you don't, you don't decide what that character is about to do because there's only one or there's only possibly one or two things, just like you and I in real life. If something was to happen, you and I would probably react probably very differently, but yeah. in one, either one or two different ways, depending on our mood. Right. Yeah. Um, and it's very much the same with the characters. So when it comes to, writing characters into a corner in a story it's it's the same for them they're all going to act in their own different ways so decisions are made all you're doing is recording it (laughs) that's that's i got the easiest bit the easiest bit of all yeah yeah it's it's great it's like watching a movie unfold in front of your eyes um but yeah so yeah i went off on a tangent it it is um it's going really well it is um it's a great series. I think it's a great series. I've taken everything I know from um, all the best murder mysteries, every, all the bits that I like from all the murder mysteries that I've read um, mm-hmm. and put them into a series. And yeah, the feedback's been great so far. So yeah, really excited. How long did the research take for, for this? Because there's a lot of twists in this and I'm guessing you don't have a background no. in the police service, but you'd have to learn some of the jargon and some of the procedure, I'm guessing. Yeah, you do. Yeah. So, um, I think anyone who writes in this genre will know one or two people in the, in the force or possibly retired detectives. Um, actually the guy, the guy that does our pest control around here is a ex detective in Lincolnshire. Andy. Yeah. Um, one of my wife's good friends is a detective. So yeah, there's always someone to reach out to. There's a, and it's not just about, it's not just about the cops, right? It's about the, it's about the other guys. So if somebody does a particular kind of vocation in the book, one of the, I know, B characters, if you like, you still yeah. got to get that quite accurate. And there's always someone you can reach out to that can kind of just give you a little bit of insight, just enough to make it credible. And just so, you know, so someone who's reading a book and it spoils the rest of the story because this one little fact is wrong. Yeah, yeah, or a character's not right. So the characters are very, very strong. We mentioned Freya. So without mm-hmm. giving too much away, she... She transfers to Lincolnshire, to rural Lincolnshire, yeah. from working for the Met Police in yeah. the capital. Uh, where does the idea for that come from? Where does she come from? You know what? I don't. I don't really know. Um, and I say it's hand on heart. The Secrets in Blood was like I said. I'm writing book eight now. That was written a year ago. Right. Um, so I uh, I've written that book a few times as well. So. I, I wrote that book and then I wrote book two and then I wrote book three and then I went back and had to rewrite book one to make book three work. And okay. Then, right. And when I was writing book four, <laughs> I had to revisit books one and two to make, to make book four work. And that's kind of how it's gone. So it's really great that, um, uh, the seven books are ready to go right now, but they're all really strong. There's no bits in there that I wish I'd have gone back and changed. I've, I've taken my time, I've taken a year at this. Yeah. So it means that it's very strong and the continuity is, is quite accurate, you know. What I liked about working with you is you'd done all the planning and you sent me a thing called the Bible for the series mm. where you outline all the characters and you even suggest actors that I should think of when yeah. I'm playing them. And Freya was Gillian Anderson, but the with the mm. English accent. Yeah. Yes. Why was yeah. that? I think, I think it's. Um, I watched the the fall. Is it? Yeah, the, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, where she's where a she cop. Was a yeah. 
yeah astonishing i thought it was brilliant absolutely yeah. brilliant um so yeah when i was when i was writing it it was her um, yeah. and even now when i'm writing stories now it's her and there's a few <laughs> other characters in it without spoiling it i don't know how much you want to give away but um yeah the a lot of the characters in the books are real actors in different programs that I've watched and different series. And uh, it's, their, it's their personalities that are coming through. Um, yeah, that made it a lot easier for me to have a base to start with rather than trying to find the character in the writing. The characters are there in the writing, but as a good shortcut to, to get up to speed, it was nice having a good foundation there for, yeah. for what each character well, was. It's interesting you say about Gillian Anderson because... Um, my mum has obviously read the books. She she reads the books fairly soon after that, before they've even been proofread. She doesn't care about the typos. She just wants to read the stories. Um, and I was explaining how Freya is kind of, in my head, it's Gillian Anderson. And my mum, she doesn't really watch a lot of TV, doesn't know all the actors. Oh, I don't know who that is, she said. Um, and then I showed her a picture of Gillian Anderson. And she goes, that's who I thought it was. So it's really interesting <laughs> that that actually comes across, right? Um, yeah. Yeah, it's it's really interesting, yeah. It's great. I like the main character. I like Ben. And Ben yeah. Ben is challenged by her at first, but he's such a, a nice, easygoing bloke. He doesn't go to war with her because he's in line for a promotion. She arrives in Lincolnshire and, and basically scuppers that. But yeah. his because he's a he's a decent bloke and he's also got tremendous admiration for her, although she's got her demons, which you explore quite mm -hmm. deeply in the book, he, he kind of goes along with it. And I think that's a nice relationship they've got. It, it's slightly competitive, but competitive is not the right word. There's a lot of mutual respect there. And from her, the other way too. And I yeah. really like the way that you did that. So I do like Ben. Yeah. There's a lot of push-pull. And, I, and yeah. I, I kind of really wanted that. Um, it's a tough one, obviously, without going into too much details. It's, it's, about, the, it's about the relationships between the team as a whole. Yeah, and then you can also break that down. So you've got Freya and Ben's kind of the push pull there, and then yeah. Gillespie and Cruz, and you know, like there's a few, yeah. there's a few other partnerships in there where there's always there's always banter because detectives are just like everybody else, right? They must walk into the incident room every day. And don't get me wrong, I would love to go into an incident room, but I never have. They must walk in there every day. You know, there's always going to be someone throwing a balled up bit of paper or taking like having a joke at someone else's expense well it's going to happen because it happens in every other line of work right <laughs> yeah. uh, even, even in politics it, it seems yeah so yeah, yeah so the, the it's got to happen so it, that's got to happen in the book it needs to be real so yeah i could write the the stories all over and take that part that realism part out of it but it'd be very flat so yeah. you need these relationships you need this push pull and you need yeah. this banter um, yeah, and I think that's the that's the glue that's kind of that's weaved in in between the actual plot. So I think that's why it comes across as quite a strong story. It's quite clever as well because you mentioned that into incident room, and I think anyone in a workplace where you work with you know different people would relate to the way that is and the dynamic and how there might be somebody there who's maybe a little bit more competitive or suspicious. I'm, I'm talking about standing here. And mm -hmm. I like I like his character, the way he's um, he's a bit of a lightning rod <laughs> to get the others to take a side as well. And he's there are si there are people taking sides because he's got a team and uh, they are competitive with each other, just like people in a workplace. It's really, really it's really, really well written. As well as the the amazing twists in the plot which seem to accelerate as the book draws to a close, the right. twists the, seem to accelerate. So it's like it just up. never lets up. It just keeps. It just keeps. You know, just keeps going and keeps going. Ah, you thought it had it all worked out, but what about this? And you're like, oh, uh, it's just, just really good, really, really good. Yes, yeah. um, it's it's interesting. So, like I, I mentioned earlier, I've written I've written more than thirty books under a different pen name. Um, but they were mostly, US, you're a US, um, USA Today bestseller, aren't you? Yeah. 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 Um, they were mostly action and action crime. And yeah, you get, you get the twists there, but it's typically, it's typically, um, not as strong and not as many. Right. So yeah. when I came to start, begin my journey writing murder mysteries and realize you can have a twist after twist, and then you can make the reader think it's a twist. 
but it's not that twist. It's another twist. Um, do, <laughs> yeah, it, it's, it's brilliant. Really, really toying with people. And like, yeah, I mean, and I don't know all the twists are going to happen. I obviously I plan a lot of them out. Yeah, but then sometimes, like I said, a character does something. Like I, w- I will outline a book. I, I typically I'll have a structure for a story. Uh, I know how I want it to end. I typically write the beginning. The, the beginning is freestyle usually, the first chapter, uh, yeah. and I, I build the story from that. And I'll have an outline, and I'll I'll have a detailed outline for the next five or six chapters, um, and then I'll have a detail when I get to the end of those five or six chapters. I'll detail another five or six, just so that it's not scripted and it's not kind of a cardboard cutout. It's you know it's fluid. It's it's happening. But I can as much as I can foresee and write that outline. Like I said, if the character's going to make his own decisions, that could wipe out five or six chapters that I've planned. <laughs> You've got to go with it because you can't make a character do something that people wouldn't expect him to do. Yeah. Right? It's, yeah. Going to upset, it's going to upset the reader, it's going to upset me, and it's going to upset the character. Right? So you have to go with that. So, it, yeah, they, it's all about the characters. It's all about it being fluid. And I think that that really helps keep energy, like you were saying about these twists, it brings these energy. So I can I can plan out three, four, five twists. But you yeah. know what? The character's going to do something that I haven't even thought about while I'm outlining. <laughs> and there's another twist, and it's even bigger and better than the ones that I planned. So, yeah. Yeah. Oh, it's just a terrific re- – it's a terrific read for me. And now, of course, it's an audio book. How did you find the process of turning – I know you've done audio books before. How mm-hmm. did you find the process of turning this one into an audio book? Um, working with you is – extremely easy um and i'm not saying that because i'm on a call with you and I'm <laughs> um uh, seriously it, it's great that you you've grasped the characters and what i find a, a lot of the time so i we've all we've all read books right and um, i would say probably most of us have read a book and listened to the audio book of that book that you've read yeah. and the narrator sometimes it's the spaces between the words. It's much like, you know how music, they say that music isn't about the notes, it's the spaces between the notes, right? Mm-hmm. And a lot of the time, I think, with a with a book, the narrator often does leave, it's the gaps between the words. They don't, it doesn't marry what, with what's in your head. Does mm-hmm. that make sense? I think but so, maybe, yeah. Uh, yeah. With, I'm trying to explain this without being too fluffy and flowery. <laughs> um, you, what what you've done to the books really marries with how it read in my head. So the emotions, the tone um, at particular pieces and particular chapters and the delays between the words and the delays, uh, especially in the funny parts, like the humorous parts, when actually they're just looking at each other because they're, they're a bit confused and you somehow get that across, whereas another narrator may have just read that and it would have been quite flat. Or they would have right. overemphasized it, and it would have been too too much. Um, what I found book, working with you is what you seem to be reading the book as it is in my head. That's probably the easiest way to explain it, and that's really really rewarding and really nice to listen to. Well, thanks for lot, that. Right, because we've got another ten books to do. <laughs> yes, but well, I'm re- I, I'm really enjoying getting in them into them. I, I told you I read I pre I don't pre read a whole book. I pre read a chapter, and mm-hmm. then I read the book. I, I read the book. I record it. Um, so I really don't know where it's going. So you know, at the end of each chapter, I don't know what's in the next chapter. I know what's in the chapter I'm reading, so I know what to put across because I can't read them totally cold. I wish I could. I mean, what a skill that would be. But yeah. So, it, but it it is it is nice to to have them unfold and for me to really enjoy the whole story and the characters as well and they're so well written as well which makes the whole process you know no really i mean tell you you know this is this is not your first book uh it really is uh it really is great work and the wild the wild fans murder murder mysteries you say they've been written for tv adaptation yeah. Is that the is that the eventual goal then for them to be, you of know, course. as, as yeah, big as big uh, yeah yeah yeah. I, I want to be sitting in my armchair up in the house, um, in front of Netflix and watching my own TV show. Who doesn't want to do that? As a writer, <laughs> right? Of 
cool. And I'd be lying if I said, oh, if it happens, it happens. But you know what? No, I really want it. <laughs> I yeah. can't see a reason why you, it wouldn't happen because they, they are so good and the characters are so... And the other thing is, there aren't too many characters. There's just enough. No. I, I think sometimes... Well, you know, you hear of people when they, they get a book turned into a movie or TV and they they say that the screenplay, they combined a lot of characters and gave lines to a generic character or, or whatever. Yeah. Because often, you know, in writing, you can write a lot of characters if you want, as long as the, the reader can keep up with it. But yours has been very economical with the characters. I think, what well, in the incident room, there's probably, what, seven or eight people, that's it, including the senior police, and that's it. Well, you could have gone much bigger. I, c I could have gone much bigger, and, I, and again, I'm keeping that quite fluid as well, so without giving too much away. So we spoke earlier about the push and pull, so the conflicts within the team itself. Yeah, yeah. Right? but it's probably worth mentioning. And you mentioned standing earlier, Di standing. Yeah, um, he leads the other team, so it's yeah. not just conflict amongst Freya's team. Yeah, so they're, they're in conflict with the other team. So there's it's another, competitive. Yeah, another layer of conflict above that. Um, so throughout the series, I mean, bearing in mind, I'm, I'm writing book eight now. They are, the numbers of the characters does dip and ebb and flow, if you like, um, yeah. just to keep you on the toes. Don't want people, don't want it getting stale. I don't yeah. want relationships getting stale. We need to bring new people in um, at the right time and it needs to be the right person. Um, so that's kind of, that's what I'm working on. And just to keep it, just to keep it alive. I mean, there's authors out there with 20, 25 books in their series, and I haven't read all 20, 25, but I'm sure, I'm sure they have to do the same thing. Yeah. Um, I'm sure they've thought about it. And it's a hard thing to bring another character in, like a central character. Yeah. Is a, it's a really hard thing, just like it is. I mean, I, well, I, I run teams. I used to run an IT team for a big architectural company. But when you bring someone else into the team, um, it's a big thing because you know the dynamic they have to get on and it's not not just about them doing the job it's about their personality as well and this yeah. is exactly the same like i said it's real life right yeah but what you do though is you have some interesting peripheral characters that you bring in to spice it up and then you then they they then yeah. they go quiet for a bit i'm talking specifically of someone like pippa bell the pathologist who is just <laughs> great you know and you'll bring her in and it'll like all right, it'll change the dynamic in the in the morgue, you know, with the with the other characters, with, with Freya and Ben. You know, she's talking about how the person was murdered or, or whatever it is she's talking about as an expert, and then she disappears for a while, and then maybe she comes back a few chapters later in a phone call with some stuff she's discovered. But she just then adds something to it. But then she's uh, that was a really nice way of working. You could have made her like I mean they're in they're murder investigations, so you could have made her a, like a regular thing that comes in and she has her place. But she's just on the outside, which is really nice because when she comes yeah. in, it's kind of a gift. You think, oh no, I really like her because she's crazy. She, she needs know? her own series. She girl. does. She needs a spin off. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> she would she would be good actually as a spin off once you get the T V series going. Yeah. yeah. Because what's yeah, so, her backstory? I mean, just brilliant. Um, so I, I wanted to. So this is a regional crime series. I mean, like the the whole murder mystery genre is split out, and there's crossovers. I mean, there's crime noir, there's murder mystery, there's police procedural, um, regional crime. So um, this isn't focused on any particular one. This is my my interpretation of a murder mystery. This is all the things I enjoy about a murder mystery. Um, and what I like is the the regional aspect of it. So we've got Gillespie, who's um, not from Lincolnshire. He's a he's, a, he's very much Glaswegian. <laughs> very uh, loud, he's, big he's one of my favorite Glaswegian. Characters he is. He's got. one of my favorites to do as well. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I can hear that, yeah. <laughs> you, and you've got Pepper Bell, who's, who's Welsh. And yeah. Then, and then you've got Standing, who's from... Um, East Mid West Midlands, or West Midlands, Midlands, yeah, West Midlands, yeah. Um, uh, so you bring in all these characters, and then obviously Freya's from London, so she's very much public school girl. Um, so you've got all these different accents, opinions, histories coming together. If it was just about a team, and everyone was from this village in Lincolnshire, I mean, don't get me wrong, I love the place, but if you all grew up together, it's like I don't know. I've, I've travelled 
like I said, I used to work abroad, and there's nothing better than sitting in a bar with a guy from South Africa, a couple of guys from Australia, some Americans. You know what I mean? And you all yeah. bring in like a different, a different piece of a different puzzle to this one big puzzle, and somehow it fits together, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. But they're all they're all chasing this common goal, which is to solve this crime. So yeah, yeah, most of them. Yeah. <laughs> well, maybe Standing doesn't want doesn't uh, <laughs> want Freya Steve to do as well as maybe Freya Steve wants him to do, or yeah, doesn't exactly. want to. Yeah. yeah. No, it's great. It's the first book, book one of the Wild Fens murder mystery. It's called yeah. Secrets in Blood. It's by Jack Cartwright. What is next for Jack Cartwright? Um. Well. You're eight books, books into this series. Uh, so I've written, yeah, to two, three, four, five, six, and seven. I'm writing eight now. There's also a free novella um, yes. on the website, which is www.jackcartwrightbooks.com. Jackcartwrightbooks.com. Um, I'll put a link in the description if you're watching this on YouTube. I, I yep. don't think I'm gonna. Don't think I'm gonna stop writing this. Um, I don't want to do a spin-off. Although, like we said, uh, there's some characters that just deserve a spin-off. They yeah. just do. Yeah, yeah. Um, I don't think I want to do that. I, I want to take this as as far as I can. I might kind of obviously I'm a writer, right? So every everywhere, I, even when I go to I don't know B and Q or whatever, I kind of I see people. I know people watch while I'm in queues, and I have ideas and I think about other series. Um, I'm not sure. I'd like to start working on another series in my head. Yeah, um, it's not. It's not really going to be going onto paper anytime soon. I don't think. I think this has got a good, good couple of years in this. I'd like to get this first ten. There's going to definitely going to be ten in the first yes. year. Yeah. Um. And let's see if we can do another ten after that. I mean, if you're game. Oh, I'd love to do them. I love them. I, I'm just having the best time with them. They're just great. Cool. Okay, so the the first one's called Secrets in Blood. There's mm -hmm. the novella, which is that website again to get the free novella. That's www.jackcartwrightbooks.com. And if you are watching this and you'd like a free download of the audio book, if you're one of the next 10 people to email me, and my email address is in the description, it's graham at macmedia.co.uk, just put free audio book in the, if I know, put Secrets in Blood free audio book in the description. The first 10 people that do that, I'll send you a code that will let you download it from Audible for free. So if you do that, just put Secrets in Blood, free audiobook. If you're the, one of the next 10 people, I'll do that for you. Hey, Jack Cartwright, great to catch mm. up with you. Uh, Likewise, thanks for mate. choosing me to be part of this because it's just great. I'm really enjoying um, it. Absolutely no problem at all. It's, um, it's going to be a long one, but it's a lot of fun, right? So, yeah, let's just keep, let's keep it up, keep the momentum going.